all the hatred and the bitterness of the past life will triumph over the guilt and the condemnation of the past life. Triumphing grace through distinct, distinguishing faith. In Romans chapter 5, reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, be justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2. In verse 2, it says, by whom, that's by Jesus Christ, he mentioned at the end of verse 1, by whom also we have access by faith. Access by faith into the grace of God when that grace appears unto us. And we accept that grace appearing unto us, then we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. First Timothy chapter 1, reading from verse 14. In First Timothy chapter 1, verse 14, and the grace of our Lord Jesus was exceeding abundant with faith, grace, with faith, grace, with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. There's a grace that is triumphant. Three things. Number one, overcoming the world and worldliness by grace through faith. Number two, overpowering our weakness and willfulness by grace through faith. Number three, overturning others wandering in the wilderness by grace through faith. Look at number one. Number one, overcoming the world and worldliness by grace through faith. In uh, First John chapter 5, verse 4. First John chapter 5, verse 4. For whatsoever, whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. What overcomes the world? Our faith. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, who is he that overcomes the world, but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God? The Son of God. He came from heaven to the sons of men so he can lead sons of men to heaven as sons of God. He's the only one that can do that. There is no other name given among men by whom we should be saved. The name is Jesus says, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And the whole of the earth shall see the salvation of the Lord. O Lord, save me, and I shall be saved. Heal me, and I shall be healed. In the penitent heart, the repentant heart, praying, pleading with God for the salvation that comes through faith. And that salvation makes us to overcome the world. I'm looking at James chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 4. James chapter 4. Reading from verse 4. It says, Ye 
adulterers, and adulteresses. What does that mean? When somebody leaves the husband and does with another man what only she should do with the husband, she is an adulteress. Church woman, outside woman, popular woman, when she leaves the husband and does with another man what he should do with the husband. That's adulteress. When a man leaves a wife and does with the another woman the thing he should do only for the wife. She, he is an adulterer now. He may not even hide it. The wife may be there, and the man uses bold face. I'm independent. 50-50. I'm giving you enough time. I'm going to give this other woman the same thing I've been giving you. He is an adulterer. And now it says, ye adulterers and adulteresses. What it means is, we are the bride of Christ. He is the bridegroom. And Christ shed his blood and paid the whole price. And he makes us, as we believe, the bride of Christ, the bridegroom. And that person, the bride of Christ, a man, a bride of Christ, a woman, leaves Christ and befriends the world and gives attention to the world and loves the world. That's the spiritual adulterer. That's the spiritual adulteress. Look at that. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God the enemy of God we need to overcome that small thing little touch big embrace and all that with others who are not your wife, your husband, avoid that. Overcoming the world and worldliness. We're looking at First John chapter 2, reading from verse 15. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world. They are dancing, the music. Their wine, their cigarettes, their marijuana, their hot drugs, their ceremonies, their festivals, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man, any pastor, any member, any minister, if any man, if any woman, an office holding woman in the church. Anywhere, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. It's not in her. In verse 16, verse 16 tells us, for all that is in the world, their festivals, their tradition, they're dancing and celebrating all the things that are of the flesh. It, it says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17, and the world passeth away and the loss thereof, but he 
that doeth the will of God abides forever. Amen. 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 We're looking at number two here. Number two is overpowering our weakness and willfulness by grace and faith. The material reference there is talking about Peter. Willfulness, self-confidence. The Lord told him this will happen. Said, not possible. To death, I will follow you through unto death. Pray. Watch. Because though the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. Go to God in prayer. The Lord Jesus Christ told him pointedly, this will happen. The remedy is that you have grace and faith. You go to the Lord in prayer so that you can overturn, overpower, overrule your weakness and willfulness. Well, you know the story. He didn't take heed to that. You know, I have uh, uh, to speak pointedly and directly. And that's what when we're teaching, so that you'll discover yourself and so that you will take care that the things that God is pointing at, you don't dodge your head, you don't uh, shrug your shoulder and say, not me. Pay attention. The weakness of your life, the willfulness of your life can only be overcome by grace and faith. You will overcome. Yes. I will overcome. Number three. In number three, we're talking of overturning others wandering in the wilderness by grace through faith. Wandering in the wilderness, others. That's what they did. But thank God. Joshua did not follow them. Thank God, Caleb did not follow them. Caleb and Joshua said, let us go up at once. We are well able. We can overcome. We will overcome. We will overturn the plan of the enemy on our lives. We will overcome. But all the others decided, no, they were going to wonder. You might be a person who is very near another fellow. He is hearing the same word. He is eating from the same table. He is drinking the same water from the well of salvation. But he is prone to wandering. But he is prone to willfulness. But he is prone to the wilderness life. But like Caleb, like Joshua, you make up your mind. You knew the Lord before knowing him. You came to the Lord before knowing her. And if he or she, prone to wandering, prone to worldliness, prone to the things that will hinder him or her from getting to the land of promise. You have to make up your mind yourself like a Caleb, like a Joshua. And you say, I've made up my mind, I purpose in my heart that I will not, that I will not defile myself. Whatever you see others do, in whatever direction you see others go, make up your mind you will have the victory, the triumph, and the overturning power not to be like other people. You will overcome. I will overcome. Proverbs chapter 21 
verse 16. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. The man, of course, the woman that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Remember, a brother, the sister that wanders out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. If he remains there until Christ comes, all the worship, all the service, all the teaching, all the attending this, attending that, will be in vain. Even though he appeared, she appeared like a believer. But because he's prone to wandering, wandering, wandering to the congregation of the dead. If he dies in that condition, we have labored in vain over him, over her. He or she that wanders like that and remains in the congregation of the dead until the physical death will spend eternity in hellfire forever and ever. In Psalm 119, Psalm 119, it says, With my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. Let me not wander from thy commandments. Verse 11. In verse 11, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. The word of God we hear needs time to settle in our heart, to transform our lives. And to make something so settled that it becomes your second nature. Just like now, you're born again and you're not likely to go and pick a cigarette. It's, that, that's not just your way. And Satan knows that. He'll not even tempt you on that. Just like now you are born again and you're not going to go into all the paintings of the world, palming of the world, the jewelry of the world. The Satan will not even come and tempt you all that. The same thing in every other area of your life. Get the word in. Soak the word in. Pray the word in. Live the word out. Your word, thy word, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. 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 Now, please don't be offended. I've noticed when we finish like this, and we say, let us pray. Then we stand up, we bow our head. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing, but we're not praying. We're just meditating. And you know, I listen very often to the messages we preached 30 years ago, 40 years ago. I have them on my system, on my iPhone. And when I listen, at the end, the people pray. Oh, they pray, they pray. And you could hear 40 years ago prayer. But today, we will pray. And um, you're not praying to satisfy me. You're praying to have grace to do what we've heard. And to have the faith, living faith, lively faith, loyal faith that we have in the Lord. And that faith will transfer the word into our heart and no offense. Amen. Amen. The messages I listened to, I remember those days. When I finished preaching, you know, either that day or, you know, that week, somebody will come to me and say, Pastor, you know, 
that last Monday Bible study. It's like you were talking to me as if somebody reported me to you. Pastor, that was my life, but things have changed. Amen? It will be like that today. Nobody gets offended. The pastor was so clear, you know, that's how, how I've always been. Pray for me that I will not change. So, today, we're going to rise up, we're going to pray. We're going to really, really pray, and God will bless you. Let's rise up now. Everything we've heard, let us bring to the throne of grace. That the Lord will grant us grace to be doers of the word. Dead faith, deadly faith, will not change anyone. Let's have transforming grace. Through definite faith, decisive faith. Definite faith. Decisive faith. I've decided to follow Jesus. Not turning back. Not turning back. Tell the Lord. Friends, they forsake me. Push me aside. Neglect me. Friends, return. But I have decided to follow Christ, no turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, all their festivals, all their traditions, all their ceremonies, all their funeral services, the way they do it, all their festivals, the world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. The things I dropped in the past when saving grace came in. Those things I dropped in the past may be knocking at the door. Let me in. Let me in. Be frivolous again. Let me in. Laugh off your head. Let me in. Old friends, old boyfriend, girlfriend, same partners, trying to get back. Let me in. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Definite faith, dynamic faith, decisive faith. If your life is becoming ordinary, common, just like the life of your neighbor sinners. Wake up. Let not the grace of God in your life be in vain. Be different. Be distinct. Live in transparent godliness. Transparent. 
if your pastor were to come to you, your office, your home, look over your shoulder, what are you reading? What are you viewing? The pastor will not have any cause to be sorrowful over you. Your life will be a life of transparent godliness. A life of transcending goodness. Transcending higher, greater, above normal, beyond normal, transcending goodness. Even when your face is under trial, no anger, Persecutors, of course, you know, persecutors are unbelievers. They might call them, say, by any name. Hold any title. If they persecute the righteous, they are righteous. The son, Isaac, was persecuted by the one who was born of the flesh. And when those worldly people, nominal Christians, Those who live and act as if they have never heard the word of holiness of heart. When they persecute you, try your faith. You have transcending goodness, no curse. No anger, no fighting, no insult, no assault, no retaliation, no revenge, no picking the stone they throw at you and throwing it at them. No, have transcending goodness. Where your faith is tried. Don't receive the grace of God in vain. Don't come to such a Bible study like this in vain. Don't serve in vain. Don't pray in vain. Don't receive the grace of God in vain. Don't misunderstand the grace of God. Don't misuse the grace of God. Don't misapply the grace of God to justify the nominal believer's character. Something. You are going the wrong way. Leave me alone. Don't you see my power? I can still carry the pillars at the gate. 
put them on my shoulder and walk away. I have anointing, power. But well, the man kept on and on and on. The father figure, the mother figure in his life said, Something, my son, where are you going? I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. He thought he had anointing. When he had power, over Delilah, grace, grace, grace. Don't misunderstand that word. Grace. Don't misuse that word. Grace. Don't misapply that word. If truly you have grace, there will be salvation there. If truly you have grace, there will be transparent godliness there. If truly you have grace, there will be transcending goodness there. Pray. That the grace of God will keep on working in your life, triumphant, victorious, conquering, triumphant grace available for you, for me. Overcoming grace available for you and for me. The grace that overpowers a weakness, a willfulness available. It will help you. And the grace that overturns the life of wilderness journey that others are taking available for you. And that grace is sufficient for you. Will keep you holy, righteous, godly until the final day. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord answer your prayers. The Lord grants you more grace, higher grace, greater grace. The Lord will hold you up by his bright hand. The devil may a kind of tent, but you will triumph in Jesus' name. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we well, thank you for everyone, every child of God, every brother, every sister, every minister, every pastor, every worker, everyone literally. Lord, show your love higher and higher, greater and greater, brother and brother, for everyone in Jesus' name. Where we'll be careless in the past, Lord, we pray, forgive, forget, and renew every life in Jesus' name. Lord, every moment, every day, every day, every week, every week, every month, every month throughout the year, abundant grace for everyone. Sufficient grace for everyone. Overcoming grace for everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, your word will not be lost on us. Everyone will profit by the word we have heard today. Make your people stronger. Make your people purer. And make your people 
walk in the valley of the shadow of death without any stain and without any weakness, without any sickness or messenger of death, touching everyone in Jesus' name. Higher life for everyone. Holier life for everyone. Happier in the Lord for everyone in Jesus' name. You are a good God. You have done good to everyone. Your grace continue with everyone. Godliness continue with everyone. And the goodness of the Lord continue with everyone, brother, sister, here, there, everywhere that we are studying together in Jesus' name. It is done for me. It is done for you. It is done in Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. God is happy with you. And you'll be happy in the Lord in Jesus' name.